Mars doesn't actually suck. It'll just feel that way when humans arrive and they have to keep pressurized gear from blowing out in the extremely thin atmosphere. But how hard can it be? On this Mars Lab episode of Mars Guy. It's been a quiet week for the Perseverance rover, which is still parked among possible point bar deposits from ancient meandering streams, as I presented in the previous episode. But some images taken a few weeks ago are noteworthy and provide an excuse for low-pressure experiments. Perseverance is carrying a calibration target for the Sherlock instrument that includes spacesuit materials for long-term testing in the intense radiation environment and dusty conditions at the surface of Mars. The cleverly named Watson camera is paired with Sherlock out on the end of the 2.2 meter long robotic arm, allowing it to image this target, which it did at the beginning of the mission and most recently on Sol 704. The polycarbonate plastic that's used in spacesuit helmets still looks as transparent as at the beginning of the mission. Visible underneath is a target that's used to assess Sherlock's laser performance and for humans to someday add an off-world location to their geocaching treasure hunt. The lack of change shows that a helmet with a polycarbonate shield should hold up well on Mars, but what if it gets cracked in some freak accident like fictional astronaut Mark Watney experienced? Can duct tape really fix it? Seems like a test for Mars Lab. This little vacuum chamber can be pumped down to Mars pressure, which is routinely measured by a weather station on both Perseverance and Curiosity rovers. The small differences between the two are due to their elevation difference. 800 pascals is 8 millibars, or 0.08 bar, just under 1% the pressure at Earth's sea level. This gauge measures the difference between the pressure inside and outside the chamber, so zero when the pump is off and about minus 0.992 bar at Mars pressure. This other gauge measures absolute pressure, but doesn't start until it's below about 2600 pascals. I use pascal units to match the Mars weather reports. Let's start with this odd collection of items that should be useful for visualizing pressure changes. I tied off the balloon without blowing it up, but there's plenty of air in it to expand when the chamber pressure drops. The orange squishy toy started with more internal air, so it really expands in low pressure. The ping pong ball and the egg are unchanged, so apparently they're strong enough to resist expansion which would have cracked them. My plan was to use this airtight polycarbonate container as a stand-in for Mark Watney's helmet, but it started leaking air right away, so no point in trying to puncture it like his. It may be airtight against air leaking in, but not for air leaking out. The expanding balloon even managed to pop open the clamps, a surprising finish. So I brought in a truly airtight container a classic canning jar. This keeps its internal air all the way down to Mars pressure, even with the lid deforming from the intense outward pressure of that internal air. I can use the lid as a stand-in for a punctured helmet shield. Covering the punctures with duct tape, like Mark Watney did, does hold air in for a while, but then it fails well before reaching Mars pressure. Spacesuits typically are pressurized to only about a third of Earth's atmosphere, so maybe that would have saved him. But it's very likely that a repair like this on a fully pressurized HAB just isn't going to work. Mars doesn't actually suck, but pressurized stuff really blows.